Welcome to Steve Draws. I'm Steve, a Dutch illustrator and animator. And in this video, I'm going to do a review about this book. It's called the Walt Disney Film Archives, the animated movies 1921, 1968, and it's published by Tashin. I have a lot of art books about Walt Disney and especially the Walt Disney animated movies, but you know, this book is really special because you know, it shows so many uh, images I have never seen before. And this is the ultimate book about all the animated movies from uh, 1921 to 1968. And this is the time that Walt Disney was still alive. This is the XXL version of the book and has 620 pages. It was published in 2016. This book is huge and comes in its own keepsake box with a handle on it, so you can carry it around. You really need to put the book on the table because it weighs 14 pounds. It's a collection of the Disney archives and private collections. If you already have some books about Disney movies, you will find some art you have never seen before. There are around 1500 images in this book. The book cover is bonded with a linen back and has gold embossing. The foreword is written by John Lester. The book is edited by Daniel Kotelschulte, a German who is also a curator, lecturer on film and art history. Apart from the beautiful images in this book, it's very well documented by some professional authors that have written books about Disney animation before. J.B. Kaufman, who also wrote Walt in Wonderland, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the art and creation of Walt Disney's classic film, and Walt Disney's Silly Symphonies, to name a few. Dijo Gaz, who published the book series Walt People, with Disney artist interviews and the book series They Drew As They Pleased. The other authors are Russell Merritt, Charles Solomon, Katja Ludke, and Brian Sibley. The book begins in 1921, when Walt Disney started making animations in Kansas at the Lafogram Studios. He started making animations combined with live action in the Alice comedies. In the middle of production, Walt Disney moved to Los Angeles and created the cartoon series Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. He lost the rights to the character and in 1928 the studio created Mickey Mouse. From 1926 until 1940, the Walt Disney Studios expanded at Hyperion Avenue. Apart from the Mickey Mouse cartoons, Disney started to experiment with a series of cartoons called The Silly Symphonies. Animation was still a new medium and with each new cartoon the technical and draftsmanship grew. Walt Disney hired many fine artists to work at the studio. In 1937 Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the first feature length animation. The style of the film was inspired by European children's books artists like Arthur Rackham. In 1940, Pinocchio was released. This move the Disney artists perfected their style and a lot of animation inventions were made. In this book, a lot of the inspirational sketches and backgrounds are shown. The Disney Studios slowly developed a recognizable style which would become the Disney style. In 1940, the most experimental animation film was released, Fantasia, based on a classical music score. This movie had the most stunning animations and artistry, but failed at the box office. 
Because of World War II, Disney lost the European distribution on his films. At this time, a new studio was built that could house the expanded staff. In The Reluctant Dragon, Robert Benchley takes a tour through the new studio. The Walt Disney Studio lost a lot of money and had to produce cheaper and uplifting animations. In 1941, Dumbo was released and was a huge success. A year later, the more realistic feature Bambi was released. It was a stunning animation feature with large backgrounds, but also lost at the box office. During World War II, a big part of the Walt Disney Studios became an army base. The Disney Studios started to make instructional movies for the army. It's for the first time that art from these movies is discussed and shown extensively. The films that followed had to be produced at lower cost and would be segmented animation features with a compilation of shorts. In 1942 and 1944, Saludos Amigos and Three Caballeros were produced, which featured Donald Duck. After that, Disney produced shorts and the feature Victory Through Air Power that was funded by the US government. Make My Music Fun and Fancy Free and Melody Time were animation features with compilations of animation shorts. The style of the Disney movies changed dramatically. One of the most influential artists at that time was Mary Blair, who worked in a more graphical style. In 1946, the movie Song of the South was released. It was a combination of live action and animation. It's great that this book included this film, because it's now been banned because of the derogatory nature depicting blacks. In 1949, The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad was released. In the same year, So Dear to My Heart was released, a film with live action and some animation shorts. In 1950, Cinderella was released. It was the first animated feature after nine years. One of the most influential artists at that time was Mary Blair, who also was the designer for Alice in Wonderland that was released in 1951. In the 50s, Disney classics as Peter Pan, Lady and the Tramp were released. The 50s were also a time of space travel. The Disney Studios produced several animations for the TV show The Wonderful World of Walt Disney. In 1959, the stunning animation feature Sleeping Beauty was released, with extraordinary backgrounds by artist Ivan Earl. The art in Disney movies also reflected the time era. Disney artist Walt Paragoy would be the main designer for films like 101 Dalmatians and The Sword in the Stone. Mary Poppins was a smashing hit and used live action together with animation and was released in 1964. In 1966 and 1968, two Winnie the Pooh movies were made. Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree and Winnie the Pooh and Blustery Day. In 1966, Walt Disney died and he never saw the finished version of Jungle Book. This book is the first volume in the series and covers 47 years of Walt Disney animation and is the most thorough book on the subject. 
This is the XXL version of the book. You can buy it on Amazon. This year also a smaller version of the book will be published. You can pre-order it on Amazon and I'll leave a link in the description below this video. If you like this book you can buy it at Amazon and I'll leave links in the description box down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell because each time I upload a new video you get a notification. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!